With increasing numbers of cars on the road in the U.S. each year, car accidents have unfortunately become a common sight. Many people die as a result of car accidents, with many more receiving serious injuries. Such injuries and death often leave the victims and their families devastated. Here are some shocking car accident statistics which the Insider Exclusive hopes makes people aware about trends in car accidents and thus hopefully reducing the number of car accidents in the United States. On an average, there are more than 6 million car accidents on the roads in the U.S. annually. More than 3 million people get injured due to car accidents with more than 2 million of these injuries being permanent. There are in excess of 40,000 deaths due to car accidents every year. The majority of car accidents could have been avoided if only the drivers would drive more responsibly. About 40% of car accident fatalities occur because of drunk driving. And about 30% of the car accident fatalities can be attributed to speeding. Another 33% and above because of reckless driving that causes the car to go off the road and result in an accident. Every 12 minutes, one person dies because of a car accident. And every 14 seconds, a car accident results in an injured victim. The leading cause of death in the age group of 1 to 30 years old is due to being involved in a car accident. People most severely injured in car accidents are between 15 and 24 years old and above 75 years of age. In this insider exclusive TV investigative special, our news team goes on location in Mason City, Iowa, in auto accidents, John Walter's story, to examine how Vance Jorgensen at the Vance Jorgensen Law Firm successfully represented John when he was seriously injured. It was around midnight on a cold, wintry February night in Mason City, Iowa, when John Walter was walking across Highway 65 that he was run over by an off-duty deputy, Naomi Olson, who just failed to see him. John suffered severe head injuries as well as a broken neck, knee, and shoulder. Evidence showed that there was not only Olson's headlights on Walter before the crash, but also other cars' headlights that passed Walter before he was struck by Olson. Shortly before the trial began, Grinnell Mutual, Olson's insurance company, offered a very small fraction of Walter's total medical and hospital bills, reasoning it was for the nuisance value of the suit. Walter demanded his policy limits. The jury returned a damage verdict at the end of the case that was well in excess of Olson's liability policy limits. Throughout his career, Vance Jorgensen has earned a reputation as an unyielding advocate and lawyer who repeatedly represents individual men, women, and families against large corporations. Vance's spirit and dedication is often compared to President Teddy Roosevelt's, especially when it comes to being in the courtroom in the arena he knows so well. For as they often say, it is not the critic who counts, nor the man who points out how the strong man stumbled or the doer of deeds could have done it better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, and spends himself in a worthy cause daring greatly so that his place shall never be amongst those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. Vance's amazing courtroom skills continue to provide his clients with the results they need and the results they deserve. This is the Insider Exclusive, live from Mason City, Iowa. It is my great pleasure to introduce Vance Jorgensen to the show. Welcome to the show, Vance. Good morning. Tell our audience a little bit about your law firm and what type of law you practice. Uh, essentially, David versus Goliath type of cases and normally, usually, cases where we are trying to make sure an insurance company does the right thing. Right. Today we are here in Mason City, Iowa. Yes. 
and at your office, and we have come here to discuss a case that involved your client, John Walters. Tell our audience a little bit about who John is. John is a simple fellow, not someone that you'd ever hear about much in the news, but yet I think if someone sat down with him, they could probably write a book about him. Just a genuine, honest soul, and he was just in the wrong place, the wrong time, and that's why we met and got to know each other. And tell our audience what happened to him. Well, you know, uh, John was down on his luck. He had a job cleaning the bar up in the north end of town, and he thought he had a date. He, uh, he, he got dressed up in what he thought was his best, and he got stood up. She never showed. And so he had some drinks, and he had more than a few. And it was around midnight, and he thought he'd go home, which would be to the basement of the bar across the street. And he was crossing the street, which is Highway 65, and, you know, he, he did a stupid thing. He stepped out in front of a car, just off the curb, and that fellow missed him and, and avoided him. And, you know, if, if John would have got clobbered there, we'd never be talking about this. But John kept on, and he made it about 90% of the way across the highway, and then he really got clobbered, and this time by an off-duty deputy sheriff. And we're going to get into more of the challenges that you had in this case because you have you hired an accident reconstruction expert didn't you well i sure did ray and, knight know, ray knight uh, ray knight yeah uh, we wish we wouldn't have had to but the problem is john's head went into the windshield yeah didn't remember anything about what happened he had a broken shoulder and a broken knee and a, and a broken neck Let's bring on Ray right now so he can tell a little bit about how important his interpretation of this case was to winning this case. Let's bring him on now. It is my great pleasure to introduce Ray Knight, an accident reconstruction expert. Welcome to the show, Ray. Thank you. I understand you were an Iowa State Trooper for, what, 15 years? Yes, sir. And so your experience is, lends a tremendous credibility to what you introduced to the court. What exactly did you tell the court about this accident that made the jury think, hey, you know, John Walters deserves a verdict in, our, in his favor? What did you say? Well, basically, I was asked to uh, <clears throat> reconstruct the accident based on the facts in, mm -hmm. in the case. And we put together some diagrams and illustrations so that the jury could understand how the collision occurred. And there were some questions about where the impact occurred uh, and could she have seen him walking across the street. Yeah. And by going out at night looking at the lights and, and, and the headlights of her car, not only her car, uh, there was another car beside her. So you had two sets of headlights yeah. uh, going down the road. And so I addressed those issues. Yeah, and you were able to show in court that there was plenty of light she obviously wasn't paying any attention and this whole case came about because the insurance company for mason city was it mason city sheriff department correct no actually it was individual because she was off duty at that okay. point all right their insurance company was grinnell grinnell mutual it? yeah and they just wouldn't pay and the reason they wouldn't pay is because they said well, well your client was drunk he was right? drunk right and he was intoxicated but that still doesn't give anybody the right to mow someone down just because they're drunk right no, he wasn't driving. He was yeah. going home. Yeah. He was walking across the street, and he'd made it 90% across the way. Yeah. When you, uh, Ray, when you go out and you know, investigate these cases, you actually go to the, to the scene where it happened, and you try to recreate what you thought would have happened, correct? Yes. And you testified in court, correct? Yes, I did. Uh, Vance, when you have a former state uh, trooper, that in, lends a lot of credibility to the jury, doesn't it? Well, you know, I thought that uh, Ray did a good job of laying out in a common sense way exactly what happened. Right. Uh, you know, the, the opposing expert hired by the insurance company was a PhD level right. engineer from California, as a matter right. of fact. Yeah, and you were able to find that some of the stuff he was saying was inaccurate, correct? Well, you know, it, uh, uh, there was a big push to try to show that somehow John took the responsibility for this that he could yeah. have seen and avoided. But the fact of the matter is, what they wouldn't say is that John had a 
a, a plate in his ankle that caused him to limp. Yes. And whether he'd been drinking it or not, he was going to be limping across that highway no matter what, if it was in the middle of the day and if he'd never had a drink. Yeah. What did you learn in this case and that you picked up from, you know, some of the, you know, trial experience that you learned from Jerry Spence and that sort of thing? Well, uh, of course, we've learned a lot from Jerry Spence uh, from the Trial Lawyers College, but I want to give credit to his son, Kent Spence. Mm -hmm. uh, Kent talked about uh, when you go to trial, trying your case through dramatic action. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it, we were surprised and it was fortunate that uh, the highway that John was hit on is 48 feet wide from curb to curb and got to looking at the courtroom thinking, how am I going to present this? Well, you know, the courtroom from front to back is 48 feet. And then as it turned out, where the jurors were sitting would be right in the position where the off-duty deputy would have been sitting in her car as she hit John Walter. So I was able to walk to the back of the courtroom and show the jury, okay, I'm John and I'm stepping off the curb and now I'm almost being hit by another motorist. And I told the jury, look, if John was hit here, we would not be in court and if we were, you should laugh us out. I kept going and I used the same pace, the same timing that Ray Knight figured out in his reconstruction would have represented the time that it would have taken John to hobble across the highway. Mm -hmm. And then when I got to the four to six feet to the end, it just so happened that one of the jurors was sitting in the position that the off-duty sheriff, deputy sheriff was sitting when she clobbered John and his head and face went into her windshield. Right, so they could actually visualize it because it's almost like they were there, right? I put the jury in the seat of the defendant yeah. and they could see the justice right there. That was smart. And we had Ray to lay things out. You know, John would have loved to have testified, mm -hmm. but he didn't have any memory. His, right. his head was bashed into the windshield, had no memory of it, so what do you do? What, what was the end result, by the way? Uh, a verdict for John. Yeah. Uh, the jury found John 20% at fault, 80% yeah. um, for the defendant, and the award was well in excess of her policy limits. Well, that's good. Which we'd offered to take before trial, but they wouldn't pay. Well, congratulations, and I want to thank you for appearing on the show. We have your client here, Vance, John Walters, so let's bring him on right now. It's my great pleasure to introduce John Walters to the show. Welcome to the show, John. Thank you. You went through hell, didn't you? Oh, yes, very much. Yeah. You're on national TV right now. What do you have to say to folks who have been involved in auto accidents? What have you learned from this whole situation? Well, you better get a good lawyer. Yeah. And the, the, I had the best lawyer there ever was. Mm-hmm. And he did a lot for me and I, and we're still good friends. And if I advise anybody that would like a good lawyer to go see him, See Vance. The Vance. Um, what do you think? You know, you've never been involved with a lawsuit before, have you? No. This is the first and only time in your life, right? And when a person who's never been involved with a lawsuit, all of a sudden, what goes through their mind when they think, hey, I'm going to have to sue somebody? You know, it's like a lot of stress, isn't it? And I didn't want to sue anybody. Yeah, you'd rather just take it on the chin and that you were seriously hurt yeah. um, and not sue them. So what do you think about insurance companies who deny coverage where they're supposed to cover something? I hate them, and I don't recommend anybody to buy that insurance. I wouldn't buy that insurance. It was the only insurance in the state. Mm -hmm. What did you like most about the way Vance handled your case? Is the way he went about it. He was, he was probably did everything he, that I thought he should, and I think he would do, he's the best, I couldn't ask for a better lawyer and I was really, I'm really happy with him. Mm -hmm. Now Vance, before the show you mentioned if I ever wanted to meet a really good client, then John is that client. Why do you say that? Uh, John was a world-class client and you know, uh, cooperation in any case by a client is, is so huge and uh, you know, John 
was absolutely the gold standard. Mm -hmm. um, he, he followed my advice, and, and he's just a heck of a good guy. And, uh, you know, Jerry Spence told us, if you want the jury to love your client, you better be able to love your client. Right. And, you know, here's the guy right yeah. here, you know. And talk about a guy that was so down and everyone else circling the wagons against him. And against all odds, there he is. And, and we went to court and we got justice for him. And the jury saw through this. Yeah. Thank God for the jury system. Yeah. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. I got a part-time job and, I'm, and I like it real well. And you work at Walmart, don't you? Yeah, I, I can only work so many hours a day. Yeah. How many hours a day you can work? About four and a half to five. They limit it or you do? I told them what I could work and they worked around it. Yeah. Is it a fun job? Yeah, I like it real well. Yeah? Just say hi to folks, huh? Well, no, I work, at, right now I'm working in lawn and garden where I water the plants, and, but I'm going to be going to, I'm going to be a, uh, I th I'm going to get transferred to uh, a cashier, I think. Oh, okay, cool. Well, I want to thank you very much for being on the show. Do you have anything else to say to America about this whole situation that happened to you? No, I, I had I had a good lawyer, and I and I'm very good. I was really glad to have him for a lawyer and a friend. Okay, well, thank you for taking the time to come here. I really thank appreciate. You. We appreciate it. You have a lot of people call your office. You know, they have a lot of perceived problems, and some of them are legitimate. How do you select the ones that you want to spend your time and basically dedicate? many, many months and sometimes years to help getting them a legal remedy for their problem. Steve, I'd love to represent everyone, but I can't. There's not enough hours in the day. So really, I look for the cases that really cry out for justice. And uh, the cases that I take are not the simple slam dunk cases. These are cases that uh, where, where there's really been an injustice where maybe the insurance company thinks there's going to be a defense that they can uh, lash on to and, and get out of pain. That's what happened here in John's claim. They said, gee, you know, he, he was drunk, so why should we pay him? The jury won't buy his case. He was drunk. You know, that's it. End of story. And again, as we've talked about, it could have been someone who was blind. It could have been a, a, a some disabled person. It could have been a, a child. It could have been anyone that was there. Yeah. And But they decided to single John out for a reason that had nothing to do with the negligence of that off-duty deputy sheriff. Right. So it's all about accountability, holding people accountable, right? You know, isn't that what this is really all about? Yeah. I mean, why should we throw the burden on society for these things when people are responsible and they have insurance to cover it? You know, we'd all like to think that the world is an ideal place where everybody stands up and takes responsibility for things that they do. But unfortunately, and thank God we have some sort of adversarial you know, um, such adversarial program, legal program, where people can make a claim with those that don't want to take responsibility. It's a long road, but it ends up sometimes in getting justice, doesn't it? Well, it's something that helps me sleep very good at night, knowing yeah. what I do is the right thing. All right. Well, I want to thank you very much for being on our program. Sure enough. Thanks for joining us. You can get more information about our guests and the issues at InsiderExclusive.com.